Good morning. I want to welcome you to Christ United Methodist Church. Let us uh, open in prayer this morning. Most holy God, we give you thanks for this day and the opportunity to gather in worship today. And Lord, as we come together in worship, may you open our hearts and minds to your word for us this day. Come close. And may our worship be pleasing in your sight. For it is in Christ we pray. Amen. Uh, a few little housekeeping and instructional pieces for today's service. Uh, first, if uh, you have a prayer concern that you'd like to lift up in worship today, let me invite you to fill out a prayer concern card. These are located in your pew back pockets. If, um, for example, your uh, prayer concern just needs to stay between you and I, let me invite you to fill out that prayer concern card anyways. You can hand it to me in the receiving line. So those that come through the offering plate will be mentioned aloud in worship. Those that you hand to me discreetly, that'll keep between us. If you are a guest with us this morning, welcome. Want to say thank you for joining us today. Um, if you would fill out one of our um, visitor cards, these are the ones with the blue rim around it. You can place this or the, past, uh, the, the prayer card in the plate as it comes by later in the service. Um, today's service is different than what we normally do. Um, following Christmas, we did lessons and carols for the Christmas season, and today, um, following Easter, we're going to be doing the life of Jesus in Scripture and song. Um, our worship team lead, Darlene, uh, myself, and Jeannie worked uh, hard to pair Scripture readings as well as hymns, um, for us to really kind of look at the life of Jesus um, from the incarnation through the resurrection today and all of the different things that Jesus did. And so if you are reading in this service today, let me invite you to come forward during the hymn that precedes your reading. And if you will come up to the pulpit uh, this way, that would be most helpful. And if you don't have a copy of your scripture reading, um, as you come... As you come forward, I will hand that to you. It'll also be on the screen, of course, but um, to make it a little bit easier for you. At this time, let me uh, invite Danielle, our liturgist, to lead us in our call to worship. All right, please join me in the call to worship. I'll do my part, and then you'll do the response part. <laughs> Have you heard the story of Jesus? Yes, I've heard of Jesus, the Son of God. Do you know where Jesus was born? Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in a manger. Do you know what Jesus did during his ministry? Jesus healed the sick, preached the gospel, and performed miracles. Do you know how Jesus died? Jesus was crucified on a cross, but he rose from the dead three days later. Do you know what Jesus' message was? Jesus was Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for our sins so that we may have eternal life. Our first scripture today comes from the Gospel according to St. Matthew in the first chapter, verses 18 through 23. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. At this time, let me invite you to stand for our um, 
opening hymn this morning, which is Go Tell It on the Mountain. We're just going to sing verse 3. Join me in the prayer of the day. God of signs and wonders, you have revealed to us that Jesus Christ is your Son and our Savior. Strengthen our faith that we may have life in Christ's name. Amen. Scripture reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 49. In his father's house. Every year, his parents traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When he was 12 years old, they went up according to the custom of the festival. After those days were over, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming he was in the traveling party, they went a day's journey. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, in the temple complex, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all those who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked them. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? Children of the heavenly father, safely in his bosom gather, nestling bird nor store in heaven, such a Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, the baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the only one who needs, I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. my 
reading is taken from Mark, first chapter, 12 through 13, Temptation in the Wilderness. The Spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness, where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. He was out among the wild animals, and angels took care of him. Scripture reading is Matthew 4, 18 through 22. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they had fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father, Zebedee, repairing their nets. He called them to come, too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their uh, father behind. I can hear my sin. I can hear my Savior calling, I can hear 
Generous God, you are our portion and our cup. In you our hearts are glad, our souls rejoice, and our bodies rest. Bless and multiply our offerings and pledges that they may bring the joy of your presence more deeply into the world. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer today, let me invite you to be in prayer for the following individuals. Um, Let us be in prayer for Nancy Kirkpatrick's niece, um, who lost her home, uh, as well as nine of her neighbors, uh, their entire uh, condo complex burned to the ground um, on Easter Sunday early in the morning and where where is she at in kansas city and so she was able to escape with her dog and like her nightgown um so she lost everything and so please be in prayer for for nancy's niece as she begins to put pull her life back together let me invite you to be in prayer for nancy stewart um she's got a doctor's appointment this week so just please be in prayer for her as she prepares for that Um, Let me invite you to be in prayer for Toby Duran 
um, for legal issues. And then let me invite you to also be in prayer for Johnny Moore, um, who is at uh, University, um, the University of New Mexico a Hospital for testing and to stabilize his sodium levels. So if you'd be in prayer for him as well. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy and loving God, as we gather today in worship in your presence, we are reminded of the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're reminded of his teachings. We're reminded of his miracles. And we are reminded of his ultimate sacrifice on the cross. Lord, we are reminded that he journeys with us through the Holy Spirit, continuing to inspire us and guide us on our faith journey. Lord, on this day, we, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the resurrection of our Lord, a resurrection which offers us hope offers us assurance of eternal life. And Lord, we are so grateful for the love and the grace that you have poured out on us through Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray that we may always remain faithful to your call. Lord, we lift up in prayer to you those who are traveling this day, asking for your protection and guidance as they journey to their destinations. Lord, we pray for safe travels and the opportunity to witness your love and grace along the way. Lord, we lift up to you those who are sick and suffering, asking for your healing touch to be upon them. Lord, we pray for comfort and strength for those who are experiencing pain. And Lord, we pray that your presence to come near to them in their time of need. Lord, we pray for those who are lost. We pray for those who are searching for direction in their own lives. Lord, we ask that you guide them towards the path of righteousness and that they may find hope and meaning through your mercy and love. Lord, finally, we pray for those who are dying and for their families and for their loved ones. We ask for your peace to be with them in this difficult time. And Lord, we pray for the assurance of your presence to bring them comfort. For Lord, we offer this prayer as well as all of those things that, that we keep quiet in our heart this day. We offer this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our next scripture is Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Do not judge others. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And, worrying, and why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get that speck out of your eye 
when you can't see past the log in your own eye. Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke 12 through 14, Jesus as healer. In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground, begging to be healed. Lord, he said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus instructed him not to tell anyone what had happened. He said, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed.
next uh, translation is from Luke 8, 22 to 25 verses. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and started out. As they sailed across, Jesus settled down for a nap. But soon a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water and they were in real danger. Disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and the raging waves. Suddenly the storm stopped and all was calm. Then he asked him, Where is your faith? Disciples were terrified and amazed. Who is this man, they ask each other. When he gives a command, even the wind and the waves obey him. Jesus, save your pilot me over life's tempestuous sea. Chapter 14, verses 13 through 20. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the people away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to the heavens. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. You satisfy the hungry heart with
next scripture is Luke 9, 28 to 36, the Transfiguration. About eight days later, Jesus took Peter, John, and James up on a mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was transformed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared and began talking with Jesus. They were glorious to see, and they were speaking about his exodus from the world which was about to be fulfilled in Jerusalem. Peter and the others had fallen asleep. When they woke up, they saw Jesus' glory and the two men standing with him. As Moses and Elijah were starting to leave, Peter, not knowing what he was saying, blurted out, Master, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But even as he was saying this, a cloud overshadowed them, and terror gripped them as the cloud covered them. Then a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. When the voice finished, Jesus was there alone. They didn't tell anyone at that time what they had seen. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, Christ, the true, the only light, Son of Righteousness arise, triumph for the shades of night, day spring from on high be near, day star in my heart appear. Visit then this soul of mine, pierce the gloom of sin. Through 36. Then Jesus began to tell them that the Son of Man must suffer and many terrible things and be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but three days later he would rise from the dead. As he talked about this openly with his disciples, Peter took him aside and reprimanded him for saying such things. Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples, then reprimanded Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Then calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you lose your own soul?
Our next reading is John 12, 12 through 15. Next reading is Mark 15, 22 to, through 24, the crucifixion. And they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They offered him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he refused it. Then the soldiers nailed him to the cross. They divided his clothes and threw dice to decide who would get each piece. Mark, Matthew, Mark 15 through 24, 15 through 34 to 37. Then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? As some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling the prophet Elijah, one of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him, a need with a reed stick so he could drink. Wait, he said. Let's see if Elijah comes and takes him down. Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. Oh, 
This morning in worship, we've had the privilege of singing and reading about the life of Jesus. Throughout Lent, we focused on Jesus' last 24 hours of life, but not really had the chance to go through and see and be reminded of Jesus' ministry, of Jesus' example for us. And so as we've lifted our voices in praise and adoration this morning, our hearts, I hope, were filled with the joy and the wonder of the life of Jesus, our Lord. You see, Jesus, he lived a life that was marked by compassion, marked by grace, marked by love. He touched the lives of so many people, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, giving hope to the hopeless. He lived a life that was uh, surrounded and surrendered to the divine. Jesus, his words, his actions were a, an, were a reflection of his deep and abiding love to God. An example for us to live by. Throughout his life, Jesus taught us how to love and serve one another. He showed us what true greatness is and that it's found in serving others. And that we are called to love and serve our neighbors as ourselves. He taught us that we're all children of God. And that God's love is available to each and every one of us, regardless of our past mistakes, of our shortcomings, of our failures. Jesus' life also serves as a powerful example of sacrifice and selflessness. Jesus, he willingly gave up his life for us, dying on the cross so that we, you and I, might be saved through his grace. His death and resurrection are the ultimate expression of God's love for us. The grace that invites us into eternal life, offering us hope in things to come. And so as we sang about and read about the life of Jesus this morning, may we be reminded of the incredible love and the most wonderful grace that God has for each one of us. May we be encouraged to follow in the steps of our Savior. May we be dedicated to living a life that is marked by love, a life that is marked by compassion, a life that is marked by service. And may we continuously be inspired by the life of Jesus. And may we always strive to follow his example in all that we do. Amen. If you'd join me in the Nicene Creed, which is found on your monitors at this time. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, and of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life that is the world to come. Amen. All right, this next reading is from John 20, verses 1 through 18. 
Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, They have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple came out for the, started out for the tomb. They were both running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linens, linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there. While the cloth had covered, Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then they hadn't understood the scriptures that said, Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. And she turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, for I haven't ascend yet ascended to the Father, but go and find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. And then she gave, him his message, gave them his message. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. of Jesus, sharing his message of hope, sharing his message of salvation with all those you meet. May you be a light in the darkness, bringing comfort to those in need and joy to those who are lost. And finally, may you remember that the love of Jesus, that the love Jesus showed for all people, and may you be filled with that love in your own heart. And may you overflow into every aspect of your life. May you go forth in peace, knowing that you are loved by God and that you are called to be a witness to his grace in this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.